Chapter 91 The spectators who saw this interesting but unexpected fight recognized that Alex was a lot smarter and competent trainer than he showed and couldn't help cheer for him loudly. Alex's plan impressed the audience and the organizers very much. The moderator saw the match and couldn't hold back his excitement, unbelievable. It looks like participant Alex was deceiving us all along. What a brilliant move. He has deceived all participants and spectators beforehand and made a surprise turn around in this difficult match. Erica also spoke excitedly, what a great trainer. Even though his Pokemon are weaker, he managed to get himself into such a great position in this match. Professor Walder also couldn't hide his surprise and excitement, yes, the tactics the participants showed in this round are perfect. In many top fights, trainers are not able to execute the tactics as well as participant Alex. The fact that he used even an interview as a tactic to fool others impressed me deeply. While the three continued to praise Alex, Alex thought about the possibilities of how he should fight now. Although Alex had a great advantage, he would not become arrogant about it. Instead, he will try to expand this advantage with all of his strength. The referee signaled Mason to summon his next Pokemon. Mason took out his next Pokeball without a word. Dash. Pokemon. Weezing. LV. 38. Type. Poison. Abilities. Levitate. Gender. Female. Potential. Deep Silver. Move. Poison Gas. Tackle. Smog. Clear Smog. Sludge. Self-Destruct. Innate Talent will O Wisp E. TM Protect. TM Toxic. TM Flamethrower. TM Thunderbolt. TM Dark Pulse. TM Facade. Dash. Alex, who saw the strength of this Pokemon, showed a serious expression. He thought, why did this idiot go with Golbat when he has such a Pokemon? Maybe, he thought that Golbat with Haze was enough to handle Scizor. Hmm, even though Haze can remove the buffs, he first has to hit Scizor with this move. Although Golbat has one level higher than Weezing, Weezing has more advantageous moves. Now that Scizor had lost almost all of his reinforcements, Alex didn't believe that Scizor could just dodge Weezing's attacks, so Alex knew that this fight would be tough especially when he saw that this Weezing can use Will-O-Wisp and Flamethrower. Will-O-Wisp in this world works similarly to the games. When used, it decreases the strength, physical strength, and HP of a Pokemon. But in this world, the effectiveness of it depends on how high the move mastery is. Also, type advantage is a big factor too. Since it is a fire type move, Pokemon's type may increase or reduce the effect. For example, it is not very effective against water-type Pokemon. But if it is used against grass-type Pokemon, then it is super effective. That's why it is a hard counter for the Scizor, who is not only a bug and steel-type Pokemon but also is lower in level than Weezing. When the referee gave the signal to continue fighting, both trainers said at the same time. Scizor, use quick attack to dodge and then use that speed to quickly hit him with Metal Claw. Weezing, let's start with the Will-O-Wisp. Alex, who knew that Mason was gonna use that move first, gave the command in advance to evade it and harm Weezing. Weezing, whose Will-O-Wisp was on the expert rank, was faster than Scizor and conjured fire that flew in the direction of Scizor with a relatively fast speed. When the flames were only a few yards from Scizor, Scizor used quick attack to dodge the flames and ran towards Weezing. While running, his pincer-like hands shone in the silver light. Weezing, Tank this attack and use Will O Wisp again. Alex, who heard Mason, couldn't help but agree with his command. A bit of harm for Scizors. Successful weaknesses was a justifiable trade off for Mason. Next, use Protect. Before Scizor met Weezing, Alex said what Scizor's next task would be. Scizor successfully hit Weezing, who was preparing Will O Wisp. When Weezing used Will O Wisp, Scizor blocked it with Protect by a whisker. Mason was getting more and more annoyed with seeing how Alex had the whole fight under his control. Usually, it is notably challenging to know the best move for a Pokemon to use within a second. You need lots of experience in order to predict which move the opponent will use and how to counter it. And it takes time to accumulate this experience. But Alex had lots of experience in his previous life by playing Pokemon games. So to others, Alex seemed like a monster who can easily predict the whole fight. Anyway, he can use protect only once, thought Mason as he gave his next command. The fact that none of his decision was successful wasn't helping in decreasing his irritation and anger. 
Scizor. Use U-turn. Weezing. Use flamethrower. Alex said it a little earlier. U-turn is a move that is very helpful in this tournament. Usually, it is not allowed to switch a Pokemon while it is under attack by a move. The trainer is allowed to change his Pokemon only when the opponent is preparing a move. U-turn, which automatically calls back his Pokemon to the Pokeball when used, is an exception to this rule. Scizor managed to use his move faster and avoided Weezing's attack by the skin of his teeth. Mason wordlessly watched as Scizor went back into the Pokeball safely. Alex won this round of this fight entirely because his Weezing only took damage without inflicting even a scratch on Scizor. Chapter 92 The spectators who saw this exciting and interesting fight applauded Alex who outplayed his opponent who was stronger so easily. The weak defeats the strong is a favorite of the masses in this world too. The moderator said with a smile, Alex seems to have the fight completely in his pocket. I think this is the first time I've seen such a young trainer with such combat control. Professor Walder, who liked Alex more and more, said, yes, the control and stability that Alex shows in this fight is on the highest level. Even many elite trainers can learn something from Alex in this aspect. I think the word genius is a good description of Alex's talent, maybe even better. Quote, Erica, who felt the excitement, said with a smile, you both really like this fight. But I have to admit that this has been my favorite fight so far. The tension and tactics in this fight are really great. Erica weighed a bit and said, he's also one of the few trainers who own completely different Pokemon and trains at such a level. Usually, it's easier to focus on one type to get the best out of your Pokemon, but for Alex, this doesn't seem to be a problem. Quote, Professor Walder heard Erica's statement and showed a thoughtful expression on his face when he said, Yes, Miss Erica Alex has trained many different Pokemon to this level, which is usually relatively difficult for beginners. While having different types of Pokemon can bring many benefits, it has just as many disadvantages. Personally, I think specialists have more advantages. Especially later. Quote, Erica said with a thoughtful expression, Yes Professor Walder, it is probably better for most trainers to concentrate on one type than to try to learn several types. Different Pokemon type needs different training, although this training is not very important at the beginning, it is later a requirement to train his Pokemon optimally. Later, often trainers who can train a type of Pokemon stand out because they have specialized in a type. Probably only monsters would manage to train their Pokemon optimally. The moderator broke their discussion with a smile, regardless of whether Alex's type of training is optimal, you cannot admire anything other than his successes. Above all, his tactics stand out from me than his talent. Erica says with a soft smile, Yes, Alex's tactics in this fight were perfectly planned and executed. I have never seen such an interesting type of tactic where the interview is used as a tactical opportunity. I personally have to admit that I am not very talented with tactics am like a participant Alex. Quote, the moderator said slightly, Miss Erica please don't underestimate yourself so much. The tactics that you showed in this tournament two years ago were at the highest level. Erica just showed a gentle smile at this statement. She knew herself that she was worse than Alex when it came to tactics. Erica knows her strengths and knows that tactics are not necessarily her strengths. Dot dot dot. Alex, who knew Kirlia was his best option, called Kirlia on the battlefield. Kirlia who was only at level 31, leveled up, didn't have much chance of defeating Weezing but she could certainly do some harm to Weezing. When the referee gave the victory, both coaches said at the same time. Kirlia used Teleport and then Disable if he uses Dark Pulse, if not use Psychic. Weezing used Dark Pull. Shit, him use Thunderbolt. Kirlia the more quickly got her order used Teleport to get out of the range of Weezing attacks. Then use its Psychic to harm Weezing. Although Weezing speed death is bad and Kirlia is using a very effective move, the level difference is too big to cause serious damage to Weezing. If Kirlia had the same level as Weezing, this attack would do a lot more damage. Weezing who saw Kirlia out of his attack range had no choice but to break off his attack and float in the direction of Kirlia. Mason who made more and more mistakes became nervous. He felt as if Alex could read his mind, which baffled him very much. His whole head was empty of the feeling. Weezing who has not received a command from his trainer uses Thunderbolt as soon as he is back in range. Kirlia planned 3 inches. Kirlia nodded and started using Teleport again. 
Plan 3 as Alex calls it is pretty simple. Use teleport to dodge Weezing's attacks and then use psychic to inflict damage on the enemy. Alex didn't think he would get a chance to use this plan because there are many counters for this plan and any experienced trainer can prevent this plan. But Mason, who apparently had little experience with fights at the highest level, did not know how to prevent this plan. Mason saw how his Pokemon always took more damage and tried to think about different plans than he thought nervously. He has never felt so confused in a fight. Even in his training match against Koga, he didn't have this feeling. After several rounds of intensive attacks, Alex noticed that his Kirlia can no longer teleport and can no longer avoid the attack by Weezing. Weezing, who refueled all attacks from Kirlia at this point in time, was bleeding heavily and only had around 20% HP. Weezing used Flamethrower. Kirlia, who uses Psychic herself to do more damage to Weezing, could not avoid the attack by Weezing and suffered severe disgrace. With this one attack, she lost more than 60% HP. The difference between levels in this world is not easy to suppress. Kirlia and Weezing use the same move again. Kirlia use Protect. Weezing use Protect. Both Pokemon managed to block attacks from the enemy. Kirlia and Weezing use the same move again and hit the enemy again. Both Pokemon passed out at the same time. Mason saw how Alex only lost his weakest Pokemon and he lose his two strongest Pokemon that this fight could not be won anymore. If he got another chance for this fight he thinks this fight wouldn't. End like that, but now was too late to think about it. He lost to a weaker trainer. He walked slowly to the referee to tell him that he was giving up. Mason who lost a lot of self-confidence in this fight just wanted to go home. The referee announces the winner of the match aloud. Alex, who won this fight impressed, was loudly applauded by the spectators. His popularity increased to a ridiculous level from this one fight. Dash dash dash, Saffron City in a skyscraper. A middle-aged man with mafia-like clothes and a neutral expression looked at the big television screen in his office. He had a Persian next to him that he stroked. The man looked interested in the screen when he took his phone from his table. Gives me the information from Alex Stark. What? A member really? Who is responsible for him? Great. Give me his file. Chapter 93. Saffron City. In an underground base, a young girl and a young man were fighting each other with an Ariados and a Nidoking, respectively. The young man had short black hair and a fit body. Together with his eagle-like eyes, he looked dangerous and handsome. The young girl had purple hair and a ninja uniform similar to that of Koga. Even though she was young, you could feel a dangerous aura from her. Especially the indifferent eyes she had were abnormal for her age. Come on, Nidoking, finish this fight with Earthquake. Nidoking, who heard the young man's orders, began to use Earthquake. After just a few seconds, the entire floor was vibrating. Ariados used String Shot to dodge the attack. The silk she shot to the roof allowed Ariados to stay in the air and be safe from the earthquake. Perfect. Nidoking, use flamethrowers while it's in the air. Ariados, who was in the middle of the air, had no way of effectively evading this attack. Ariados tried to dodge the attack but didn't quite make it and was hit. It already was seriously injured due to the fight, so it passed out immediately after being hit by this attack. The girl looked sadly in the direction of her Pokemon when she called it back. During this fight, three different Team Rocket executives were talking on a balcony over the battlefield. Hmm, this year, the rookies are particularly strong. Yes, in other years, the third rank could have been the winner. Maria, right, she is good but nothing compared to these two. The two have Pokemon on the elite rank at such age. The talent of these two trainers is ridiculous. It's a shame that all three participants have already been taken away by other executives. Aren't I right? Lisa. Lisa quietly listened to the talk of two Team Rocket executives and said with a smile, no reason to be jealous. I was just lucky that Maria was in the rookie group that I was entrusted with. Besides, Maria is good, but compared to the other two, she is a good deal worse. Well, although you are right, these two participants have a strong background, so that it is expected from them. While the Team Rocket executive was speaking, the Team Rocket captain, who was selected as the referee for this match, announced the outcome of the match. Participant Marco defeats participant Janine and wins this tournament. The referee threw out a Pokeball and summoned his Slowbro. Then he said out loud, the first, 
second, and third ranked contestant will be personally rewarded by the boss. These participants, please come here. Marco, Janine, and Maria went to the referee when he said that. Marco, who already knows who the secret boss of Team Rocket is, didn't show an excited expression when he heard this. Well, he is Giovanni's nephew, so he obviously knows who is the said boss is. Janine, the daughter of Koga, also knew who the boss of Team Rocket is. Although most Team Rocket members don't know who is the boss of Team Rocket, it is an open secret among the senior members. Even the top members of the Alliance know that Giovanni is the boss of Team Rocket. The reason they passively ignore Giovanni is not known, but it is believed that the Alliance would suffer too much damage if they tried to remove Giovanni. Compared to Giovanni, three other Team Rocket members are much less known. Only Giovanni and a few Team Rocket members are aware that Koga, Sabrina, and LT. Surge are also part of Team Rocket. The Alliance is not fully aware of Giovanni's actual strength. Marco, Janine, and Maria teleported into a large, luxury room with a short man inside. Together with this short man, a bored fortress was lying around. The young man looked at the three when he got up and said, Ah, hello. I'm Car and the person who will lead you to the boss. Marco saw Car and immediately showed a respectful pose and said, Hello, sir. My name is Marco, and I'm happy to finally see you in person. Haha, <laughs> I've heard a lot from you too, Marco. Your father was really a strong person. In comparison to Marco's friendly greetings, Maria and Janine gave respectful greetings but didn't talk much. All followed the who left the room. Marco kept on continuing their conversation. Maria and Janine wordlessly follow Carr as he led them to a large hallway. After not even one minute, the four were in front of a large double door that was beautifully decorated. We are there. I have completed my task, so I will be going away. Then he left without waiting for the three of them to answer. Marco looked at the door for a few seconds before he started opening that door. When the door opened, the three saw a large and luxurious office with a man and a Persian inside. Giovanni looked briefly at the three when he said with a strong and indifferent tone, Hum, you are here. Come in and don't stand there. The Persian gave the three of them a cold look as they walked in. Maria had the feeling of being watched by an absurdly strong monster as they entered. She thought that if this monster ever wants to kill her, even with the help of her Pokemon, she won't survive even a second. When she saw the man in the chair, she couldn't help but show a surprised expression. Maria did not expect that the strongest gym leader of Kanto would be the boss of Team Rocket. Giovanni looked at the three of them with an appraising gaze and said, I congratulate you all for the performance you have shown in this tournament. Not only will three of you be promoted, but each of you will receive special rewards. After saying that, he directed their eyes towards three Pokemon egg that were inside incubators. All three eggs were of different colors and sizes. Giovanni saw the curious gazes of theirs when he said, one of these egg is of Larvitar that was previously promised for the winner. But because the quality of the rookies has risen sharply this year, I have chosen two other rewards. The other two Pokemon egg are probably not as rare as a Larvitar egg, but should not be underestimated, you'll know why later. Maria took the Pokemon egg incubator of hers and looked at the egg with a curious look. Chapter 94 Alex sat in a seat on the edge of the arena battlefield and watched the fight with an examining look. The fight that Alex was watching was the fight of participant number 1 Misty vs participant number 4 Roberta. Grass type trainer vs water type trainer. Although competitor Roberta had a type advantage, Alex didn't think she could win. As long as she didn't show any particular strategy, she was likely to be easily defeated by Misty's high level Pokemon. Alex just hoped that she was strong enough Misty to use all three of her Pokemon so he could observe them. The fight finished faster than Alex. Predicted. Participants Roberta's Pokemon were not only several levels under Misty's Pokemon but also poorly trained. None of their Pokemon showed a move on the expert rank. And no Pokemon showed physical superiority, such as participant number 2 Junichi's Pokemon, who have an above average physical performance. Misty only used her two weakest Pokemon to defeat all three of Roberta's Pokemon. Alex showed a funny expression when he saw how Misty had to defeat such easy opponents to get into the final. Well, the match is decided in such a way that it is easy for the top players. While Alex's benefit ended after entering the top eight, 
Misty will have that benefit until the final. The stronger you are, the more benefits you get. Dot dot dot. One hour later, Alex and Junichi were standing on the battlefield with a referee. The winner of this round will officially fight against Misty in the final tomorrow. The referee repeated the rules for both participants again, even though he noticed that none of them was listening. After the referee completed the protocol of speaking the rules, he showed a signal indicating that both participants had to summon their first Pokemon. A Scizor and a Hitmonlee were called onto the battlefield simultaneously. Junichi had, of course, watched Alex's last fight and didn't want to make the mistake that Mason made. Dash. Pokemon. Hitmonlee. LV. 40. Type. Fighting. Abilities. Limber. Gender. Male. Potential. Shallow gold. Moves. Rolling kick. Meditate. Double kick. Faint, Brick Break, Facade, Jump Kick, Focus Energy, Mega Kick. Innate Talent, Headbutt E, Innate Talent, Poison Jab E, Innate Talent, Helping Hand. TM, Protect, TM, Rock Slide. Dash, Alex, who saw his opponent choosing his strongest Pokemon first, as expected, showed a slight smile. His assessment of Junichi was that he probably won't try to put too much thought into choosing the first Pokemon so Alex could easily predict which Pokemon Junichi would choose first. Although this is not a great advantage, one cannot underestimate this advantage. Are both participants ready? Okay. 3, 2, 1, go. Alex gave a smile when he said, Scizor, Hyper Beam. Junichi said at the same time, Hitmonlee, use Medita. Meditate. You can save your tricks. I won't fall for it. Alex smiled when he heard this. Junichi didn't understand the smile at first. But when he saw Scizor not using focus energy but toxic, his face went dark. Hitmonlee, who was using Meditate, couldn't avoid Scizor's move and was poisoned. Although his Pokemon was poisoned, Junichi didn't panic because he knows that the toxic from a non-poison type Pokemon would be less effective. Especially if the targeted Pokemon has a higher level. Although Hitmonlee was slowly starting to take damage, Junichi didn't see it as a significant disadvantage. Hitmonlee, use Meditate once more. Junichi wanted to repeat Alex's tactics in the last round and strengthen his Pokemon a lot before defeating all three of Alex's Pokemon. Although his Pokemon are stronger, Junichi didn't want to take the chance. Scizor, use Sandstorm. When the moderator heard the move that Alex said to use, he made a startled expression on his face. Participant Alex appears to be very rich to be able to buy the TM Sandstorm. Although most trainers rate the TM Sandstorm as not very strong, one should not underestimate the damage that a Pokemon suffers if it stays in this Sandstorm for a long time. Alex used almost all of his money yesterday to buy TMs for Scizor. Even though he spent a lot of money on this one move, Alex had no reason to hesitate. Save money or make his Pokemon stronger. It's a no-brainer for Alex. Scizor who heard this created a small area where a strong sandstorm was raging. This sandstorm stretched across the whole battlefield and made it very difficult to get in the middle of the arena. Although the visibility was reduced, it wasn't so bad that the Pokemon and trainers can't see each other. As Junichi was about to give his next command, Alex said with a pressing voice, Scizor, use Plan 5. Junichi, who heard this? looked briefly at Scizor to find out what Scizor wanted to do. Although he wanted to attack, he didn't risk attack Alex just like that. Scizor who heard this was using Razor Wind on the solid ground of the arena. The surface was damaged by the move and formed a small dust cloud that was kept in the air by the sandstorm. Alex let Scizor practice the move sandstorm for a whole day to keep dust in the sandstorm in the air. Although Alex doesn't know how exactly Scizor does it, he was happy that his request was easier for Scizor to implement than he had initially thought. This very small change in this move allows Alex to implement his plan flawlessly. Junichi, who saw Scizor showing more and more gaudiness in the arena, made a grave face. For other trainers, Alex's strategy would be completely useless because they only have to use a flying type move to destroy this sandstorm. The second possibility is to have a Pokemon that can perceive the opponent's Pokemon even without his eyes. Only Junichi, who was the fighting type trainer, had neither of these two options. There is also another way. Like Maria, you can attack the arena with a high attack surface move. This option are available to most trainers. Hitmonlee, 
Use Rock Slide. Alex knew that Junichi would use this move. Junichi had no choice but to hope that luck was on his side and that Rock Slide will hit Scizor. He thought that Alex had executed his plan completed, which was not the case. Chapter 95 When Alex said, Plan 5, it meant this. 1. Use Razor Wind to create more dust, which will enhance the sandstorm. 2. After most of the arena is invisible, use Substitute to permanently prevent accidental hits. 3. While you are protected from Substitute, use Focus Energy and Agility to strengthen yourself. Also, use Roost to heal the damage from Substitute. Sandstrom wasn't the only TM Alex bought. 4. Make sure to keep on using the move Sandstorm. Alex suddenly showed a nonchalant expression when he said to Junichi, don't hold it against me. I only have one chance of victory. If I am lucky, that is. Junichi showed an annoyed expression when he heard Alex admit his circumstances. You are a fool if you think that luck can save you from me. Hitmonlee only needs to hit your Pokemon once or a maximum twice before it makes Scizor unconscious. And as soon as your Pokemon is unconscious, your sandstorm will disappear. I don't have to explain what happens then, do I? Alex showed a neutral expression when he said, better than a 0% chance of winning. Although in your case, I would rather be looking at your Pokeball to check if your Pokemon has passed out or not. Pokeball vibrates slightly when the Pokemon is unconscious from the Pokeball. It also has a button that allows the trainer to call his Pokemon directly back to the Pokeball when his Pokemon is not far away. Junichi looked at Alex one last time and began to ignore him. He thought Alex was using this general knowledge to make him nervous. Alex, who saw this, showed a smile when he said, I just noticed that you haven't changed your Pokemon even though it's poisoned. Does that happen to have a reason? Could it be that you only have one Pokemon that has a move that has a large attack area? Or is it because your buffed up Pokemon will only need one lucky hit to defeat my Pokemon? Hmm, I wonder Tilda. Junichi's eyes twitched when he heard the words of Alex. Although he didn't want to admit it, Alex was. Right, he has fought a lot of smart trainers, but none was as difficult to beat as Alex. He knew that if his Pokemon had the same level as Alex's Pokemon, he would have been easily defeated by Alex by now. This thought hurt his self-confidence badly. Within five minutes, Junichi became more nervous and more confused because the sandstorm did not stop. He had already seen 50 times how stones were accidentally rained over the battlefield, and the sandstorm was still active. Junichi couldn't deny anything when the Pokeball from Hitmonlee vibrated slightly. He could only blame his luck. He pushed a button from the Pokeball, and a red beam from the sandstorm flew in the direction of Hitmonlee's Pokeball. Junichi thought for a few seconds when he called his next Pokemon. Dash, Pokemon, Hitmonchan, LV, 38, Type, Fighting, Abilities, Iron Fist, Gender, Male, Potential, Deep Silver, Moves, Comet Punch, Leer, Agility, Faint, Swift, Dizzy Punch, Fire Punch, Ice Punch, Thunder Punch, Focus Energy. Innate Talent Facade E. TM Protect. TM Toxic. TM Bulk Up E. TM Seismic Toss. Dash. When Alex saw his next Pokemon, he knew why Junichi didn't want to change his Hitmonlee. This Hitmonchan has only one move that can inflict damage to Scizor in this sandstorm. That is, of course, Swift that always hits the target as long as the target is not out of the range. The problem was that Swift is a special move, and Hitmonchan has a terrible SP. At K value of 35. Also, the fact that Scizor has resistance towards Swift as a steel type Pokemon doesn't help. Although in Alex's case, Swift will do more damage to Scizor than Hitmonchan will take from the Sandstorm. Although Scizor can use Roost, it is not a move that Scizor can use indefinitely. Alex estimated Scizor probably won't be able to use Roost during the rest of the fight much anymore. When the referee gave the signal, Alex said aloud, Scizor, use wing attack to blow the dust away. Junichi was giving the order at the same time, Hitmonchan used Swift. Wait, what? Scizor used his flying energy and transported most of the dust out of the battlefield, which quickly became visible. Although Scizor was hit by the Swift move, he appeared to have taken little damage. Junichi became happy when he saw Alex was suddenly ready to fight head-on. His Pokemon have been trained in close combat. 
so they can easily defeat other Pokemon at the same level in a fair match. Scizor, use Metal Claw. Hitmonchan, use Fire Punch. Scizor flew in the direction of Hitmonchan at a ridiculous speed as his claws shone with silver light. Hitmonchan then noticed that Scizor was buffed to the maximum and was very dangerous. Though Hitmonchan was taken by surprise, he showed an unusual fighting instinct and used Fire Punch to hit Scizor simultaneously. Both Pokémon flew a few meters after being hit by the other's move. Particularly Hitmonchan flew more than 10 meters away. Scizor hit by Fire Punch took extreme damage from this one move only. Not only the spot that was hit was coal black, but it was also extensively bleeding. That one hit took more than half of Scizor's HP. Hitmonchan hit in the head by Scizor's move didn't look any better and was gravely damaged. Scizor, again, Alex, who had used only one Pokemon till now, was ready to exchange Scizor with one of the enemy Pokemon. As in chess, if you have an advantage and both parties have two pieces of the same value, it is worth taking out the opponent's chess piece by sacrificing your own to increase your advantage. Junichi, who saw this, knew that Hitmonchan could not dodge this attack with his speed. Use Protect and then Fire Punch. Alex, who heard that, said quickly, you, too. Hitmonchan used Protect to block most of Scizor's attacks, and Scizor, after his attack, used Protect to block Hitmonchan's attack. Scizor, again, damn, you too, Hitmonchan, both Pokemon exchanged attacks again. After the two moves were used, the viewers could see an unforeseen outcome. Both Pokemon passed out at the same time. Junichi saw how he only had his weakest Pokemon left, but he didn't want to give up yet. Although the chance is small, he wanted to try his luck. 